Stock preparation is a critical component to having success with your CNC project. Whether you're looking to face the top of some stock or you need to flatten something with warp and twist the sworn enemies of woodworkers. We're about to give you the tools to have success creating stock for your next terrific project. The first thing you'll need is a perfectly flat machine bed. We have another video coming out about the same time here with our buddy Fleming from support talking about that process so you can get to this point. With your bed flat, bring in your stock here. I have a gnarly piece of rough sawn walnut that measures in at 16 by eight and you're gonna wanna position it so you get maximum work holding opportunity. You can see just how gnarly this piece is. It is not flat, it has twist and warp. Because of this, we'll need side clamps. Here I'm using our Crush It Pro clamps, and these are from the sides. I put the stops in the front, I'm gonna put the clamps in the back, and you'll see in a moment again just how out of control this board is. And how do you fix that? You'll need some wooden or plastic shims. They're available for a couple of bucks at any big box store. I keep a pile of wooden ones in the shop just for this purpose. Go ahead and slide them underneath and then tap the board, see if it's moving. Just slide them to where they touch. Don't lift the board up. You want the shims to prevent vertical movement by supporting the board. As I tap each corner, I'm not getting any vertical movement, so I'm ready to clamp it down. With all those shims in the same spot, tighten all your side clamps. With that, work holding complete. Next up, we have to set our X, Y, and Z. X and Y will be zeroed out first by jogging to each edge independently. Our 251 down cut quarter inch end mill has a nice cleft right in the center which makes it easy to find the approximate edge. Here I'm going to zero the X and the Y. In order to zero Z, I'm going to go to a different section of our stock. I'm going to look for the high spot. This happens to be in the top right corner. So I'll wrap it back there and I want to go ahead and use the paper method. Sliding the paper back and forth until I get just a little bit of traction underneath that z-axis as I lower it gets me to the point where I can go ahead and set my z0. With z0 set, I'm now going to wrap it to what I think is the lowest point of my stock. Having lowered my end mill down to where it's touching the stock at what I think is the lowest point, I can now turn my attention to carbide motion. The z position value gives me my overall depth of cut required to make this board flat. Inside Carbide Create, I add my stock dimensions. Next, I add a rectangle just larger than the stock size entered a moment ago. I'm going to go 0.25 over for each one of those dimensions. By making the vector oversized, I ensure that my end mill will capture all the corners of my stock. That's what you're looking for is that overlap. And now it's a pocket toolpath. That's all it is. Simply a pocket toolpath down to 7 millimeters. I'm leaving a little bit of extra there. I'm going to use the McFly cutter. That's our one inch fly cutter. I'll quickly go through the settings to optimize them, then load this file into carbide motion. With the toolpath thing confirmed, it's time to chuck up the McFly and hit start. The first little bit of that simple pocket, you're not going to touch very much, but eventually you'll start to see the edges come in. Here we're cutting a little bit more, a little bit more, about a half a millimeter at a time with the McFly. You can go up to a millimeter. One thing with the fly cutter, you might get some burning. Now here you want to reduce your RPM spin on your spindle to get rid of that burning. Walnut will have a tendency to burn. You're also going to find that maple is really prone to that problem. With the first toolpath complete, you'll notice the facing has not been entirely accomplished. I did this on purpose so that I could bring in a half inch end mill and show you that going through the material. This is an option if you have our new 80 millimeter VFD spindle. This is a standard half inch three flute flat bottom cutter. It is incredibly rigid and able to cut through massive amounts of material in a single pass. I've regularly set my depth of cut north of five millimeters. This toolpath finishes up and the advantage of that half inch cutter is a ton of speed. You can make a single pass and you don't get any burning. Upon close inspection, there was a tiny uncut area along the back edge of our stock. I decided to run one more facing pass and I wanna show you how quickly you can go in, copy your toolpath, duplicate it, set up a new toolpath to run in just 45 seconds. I added a toolpath at a little bit lower depth and I had my machine running once again. This is a huge advantage with carbide motion and carbide create. They play so well together, you're controlling your machine with a computer. This is stellar. 45 seconds from, hey, I wanna take a little bit more off this board, I wanna change my project just a little bit, to the machine cutting material once again. With that toolpath running to completion, we have one side that is completely flat. This means it's time for the B side, but before I flip it over, I'm gonna mark its position with a pencil. This allows me to flip my board and have it in almost the exact same position. Also, I can remove the shims. I'm not going to need them for this second side cut. 
flipping my stock and aligning it with those pencil marks, my XY is basically dead on. Now for this B side, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the strength of that half inch end mill once again. Same process here, set the Z on the high point, go over and measure how much depth you need to take off. From here, you could run the same pattern that we ran on the A side, but I'm gonna show you a little bit different way to do it. I'm gonna construct a facing path inside Carbide Create by using polylines. Pretty easy to do. The key measurement here is gonna be measuring your vertical. You want that vertical length to be equal to whatever step over you want because you're gonna run this program with no offset. Here, I'm gonna go a quarter inch, and now I'm simply gonna copy and paste those polylines, flip them each time to create a back and forth pattern. I'm gonna do this until I've reached the top of my stock area, and I feel like I've covered everything accurately. As a final step, I'm gonna add one more polyline to the bottom and the very beginning of my cut. Highlighting everything, go ahead and use the Join Vectors tool, and this will make those polylines into one continuous snake line that will face your board. And then you can resize it a little bit. You can pull it sideways without altering the step over that you have. You're just pulling the width. If I wanted to add some height, I would just go ahead and add more polylines and join those to the existing snake. This is a flexible pattern that could be used for other projects. From design, we head to toolpathing and we're gonna utilize a single contour toolpath. And that toolpath will be run at no offset. The maximum depth for this contour has been set by the difference between the high and low points on our stock. With the parameters set, we're ready to go cut again. Here it is mowing down the other side, five millimeters of cut space in the middle. And you can see how much dust that's thrown off. That is easy peasy for that end mill. I did have a 0.5 finishing pass, really didn't need to do that. Could have cut it all in a 5.5 and that would have been done. There it is. What was warped and twisted checks in at perfectly flat. You now know the strategy to make any ugly piece of wood a thing of beauty. That's it for this one. We'll see you back here in the studio again with more information, ideas, and inspiration.